Okay, it's six o'clock. I will call the meeting to order. Um, could we stand please for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. A uh, motion please to approve the agenda. Uh, Tina and Jason, um, be, uh, discussion. Uh, I do have an addition please. Uh, under the um, number four, um, we have one other report to add, which is a report by Linda Egner. And Linda, you're giving a report on, on what? You're muted. On a Wayne County partnership meeting that was held yesterday. Partnership meeting, okay, thank you. Any other additions or, or uh, discussion about the agenda? Then all in favor? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Motion is carried. To those of you who are tuning in, uh, we are going to be um, taking um, an executive session first. It'll be about half an hour, um, and then we will return. Uh, so, could I have a motion, please, to go into executive session? for the purpose of discussing a legal matter. Uh, Tina and Linda, any discussion? All in favor? Okay. Those of you who are listening, uh, who are uh, listening <coughs> us tonight, uh, Tina will tell you what to do. I will ask that you all leave the meeting. The meeting should resume approximately 6.30. So if you wanna come back about 620, 625 to sit in the waiting room. When it's when they've resumed, I will let you back in. So if I could ask you to leave the meeting, please. Scott, can you leave the meeting, please? Thank you. Everyone has left the meeting now. I am going to mute and turn my camera off. Megan, you'll text me when you're ready to resume. Yes. Thank you. Have you stopped the recording? Did you say you have meeting. stopped the recording? You stopped recording. You're muted, Tina. Okay, there, I am back. Good. Is it okay to let everyone in that, that's in the waiting room? Okay. There's about 20 people. 20, wow, okay. Okay, it looks like everyone is in. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're back into open session. I uh, thank you for waiting or catching up with us if that, if that may be the case. Um, we are going to be moving on to our presentations. Um, you may have noticed if you had time to see who's here tonight that our superintendent Michael Pullen is not with us but 
uh, Megan Pilati, Assistant Superintendent, is uh, doing that job for us tonight. So with the presentations, Megan, I'll turn it over you, to you to introduce our, our student present, presenter. Great. So Cindy, we can't see you, but I see that you're on the screen here and hopefully we'll be able to hear you. Uh, we have Cindy Delper presenting from the middle school. And Mr. Matthews, thank you for connecting us with Cindy tonight. So oh, very excited about um, Cindy and presenting to the board. She's a great representative for the middle school. Um, she's been through a lot of challenges and she keeps pushing. So Cindy, I don't know, can you hear us all right? Are you there, Cindy? I'll tell you what I'll do, Mrs. Pagliotti, is, um, okay, I just got an email from her saying she can't hear us. Oh, let no. Me, let me just silence um, the microphone, and I'll let you know if we can get her back up and running, okay? All right. So while we're working on getting Cindy connected, um, our next presentation is SWBR and Campus Construction, if you want to go ahead. Yep, sure. Brian Belair with Campus, just giving you an update on the capital project. Um, as you can see, the uh, the capital project is really winding down. We're we're going through final punch list, O and M manuals, final commissioning. Uh, we have a minor change order work left open, uh, and some trainings. So I'd like to give you an update on each of those. Um, the punch list that we have remaining currently. Uh, is mostly the stairwells uh, and the first floor. Uh, for those of you who had the ability to look at the uh, monthly report, we did have uh, mostly drywall patching and paint um, in the stairwells and on the first floor. Um, before we opened for school, uh, that contractor really didn't meet expectations. So on October 11th was our opportunity to get in there and really grab those stair stairwells with unabated access. So they've gone through, uh, the next step is for those patches then to be painted. Um, SWBR will then follow through with a, with a final punch list. We've actually produced one punch list already um, and that's the work that's taking place. Um, one of the next steps is O&M manuals or operation and maintenance manuals. We've received those from most all of the contractors We've provided comments back. That also gets reviewed by SWBR and ME Engineering, um, at which point we turn over a digital file, um, as well as hard copy if requested, um, to the district. Uh, and that includes everything from what filter do we install in the rooftop unit to, hey, what's the paint color in the cafeteria? Um, also, we are working on commissioning. We had quite a commissioning effort. Um, and again, if you remember, that was a bit delayed because we had to go through, we had a manufacturer's defect um, in those units where we had to replace the condensation pans. And we actually had to touch almost every single unit um, in the school. Those are complete. We went through Friday um, and Monday the 11th and got through the, I would say 90% of the commissioning. Uh, what we have le left is some programming, um, and by programming, I mean on the building management system that Day has, um, which has the computer-controlled screen. There's some items, probably about a dozen, um, that relate to more technical issues. If, if there's a high alarm or an alarm for a fan, um, making sure that those safeguards are in place. Um, we probably have, well, we do have about a half day after that programming is done to come in, which we'll do second shift, uh, and it's just field verification that the programming worked. Um, we do have uh, change order work that we're working on. Um, most of that relates to door hardware uh, with regards to access control um, and security. So. And those doors primarily are on the exterior um, so that, you know, card swipes work. 
That work um, is slated to be completed in the month of October so that the card access points on the exterior work. Um, we're working through some challenges on the north door where we're adding uh, a door operator. But again, all of those should be or will be taken care of in the month of October. Um, and ongoing as far as um, that O&M and closeout materials is training. We've done our initial training um, of the uh, North Rose staff as far as the building management system. Uh, we have upcoming trainings for auditorium lighting, um, the sound system, not only in the um, auditorium, but also in the gymnasium. Um, and we also have follow-up trainings from uh, security, which would be card access, um, as well as lockdown. Um, and those aren't just one training. For example, in the card access world, we have about three trainings that we schedule with the district. Um, with the building management system, we actually have two to three scheduled. Um, we've already gone through the first one um, and scheduling a second follow-up. So that's really where we are with the capital project. Um, by the end of the month, we should be wrapped up um, transferring over to the district um, those operation and maintenance manuals. Um, whether all those trainings are 100% complete, uh, some of those trainings involve multiple people within the district. Uh, so getting all those parties together um, at the same time uh, is what we're scheduling now. So those may not be completed by the end of October, um, but they will be scheduled. So at this time, I'd like to open it up to questions, if anybody's got any. Steve, do you want to jump in here? Is there anything you want to add? Um, sure. Uh, can everyone hear me? I hope yes. my microphone is working. Thanks. Um, yeah, SWBR is really just working alongside and in support of the, um, the efforts that campus um, is going through on this whole closeout piece. Our, our piece of it is primarily the reinspecting all of the punch list items after they're complete. And um, you know, we're making multiple trips out uh, a week uh, to do that. And um, if there are any loose ends from a, a design standpoint, um, campus and the district uh, alert us and we, uh, we chase those down as well. So that is um, really, really at, uh, working in support of of Brian to uh, to help get everything done this month and and uh, closed out um, shortly thereafter. Good, good, glad to hear that. Board members, do you have questions? I have one, Cinda. Okay. Uh, and I'm not sure what should go to Brian or Steve, but oh, there you are. I couldn't find. <laughs> <it. laughs> yeah. Well, have we completed uh, both everything at the elementary school and everything at the high school? Uh, that's a great question, Paul. The one item that we do have open um, at the high school is card access related um, on three door locations uh, in the corridor doors. Hmm. Um, a lot of that has to do with supply chain and us getting the parts and pieces to put that back together at this point. Um, but again, at the high school, we have the three doors, uh, at the elementary school. Uh, we had the flooring project. There was a warranty issue that was open, I would say, last month, and we were able to close that, and the WBR came through and inspected. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Well, thank you for being with us, and uh, we're so happy to have this coming to a close. Thank you. Keep it up. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. All right. Mark, you want to, is your girl here? Yes, Cindy. Cindy's here. Yes. Hi, Cindy. I just wanted to just, just say one more time what a great representative I think she is for the middle school. I'm very proud to introduce her. Um, she's kind to her friends. Um, she's courteous to others. And she tries her best every single day. Cindy, it's you just got to unmute and you're all set. 
Alright, hi guys. Hello. Good evening. My name is Cindy Dublin. and I am in seventh grade. I have been going to NRW since kindergarten. I love this school and I have a lot of very kind friends here. There are many reasons I love this school so much. Some reasons are most of the teachers will help you if you need anything. We get time during our lunch to go outside and take a breather. Another reason is because the teachers will take time during their day to stay after with us, even if it's just to get to know us and support us more. I was out of school for the first few weeks because I got COVID. It was hard to do the work out of school while feeling sick, but when I got back and had a few assignments missing, my teachers helped me get caught back up in class. I was welcomed back by teachers and friends telling me they missed me and they were glad I was feeling better. It was also hard getting back into the swing of things like waking up early and going to bed early. But I, but I like being in school better than being out. That way the teachers can help me and support me more. I am looking forward to having more sports and hopefully soon we can have clubs. Thank you. Oh, thank you. We're, we're so glad that you're happy to be back and doing well. It's always good to hear that kind of news. Uh, board members, anything you'd like to say to Cindy? Linda? Oh, Jason, okay. Jason? There we go. I just wanted to thank her for taking the time to come in tonight and uh, put forth such a nice presentation. Thank you, yes. Linda? I, I also wanted to uh, thank her for that and I, I really appreciate her enthusiasm and her uh, positive attitude about everything that she's overcome and how much help she's gotten. That was. It was a joy to listen to. Yes, very much so. Paul. Hey, Cindy, I'm with you. I hope you get to have more sports in the future too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, well, thank you so much, Cindy. Thank you for being with us tonight. It was great to hear that things are going well. And we certainly wish you have a wonderful year. Thank you. Cindy, I told, I told you you were going to do great, and you did. Good she job. We did. Bye. Bye. <laughs> uh, we come to the time now of reports and correspondence. Um, the uh, Christy. Are you and Matt going to be talking about the school improvement plan? Yes, we are. All right. Well, unless Megan wants to get in with an introduction. <laughs> sure, um, I can do that. Um, we are very lucky tonight to have the administrators from the elementary school, along with their school leadership team, um, here to present their school improvement plan. And thank you all for taking some time out tonight to come tell us about the progress. It's been just five weeks of the school year, um, but I think the board members will notice that a lot has happened since they first heard the first draft of your plan this summer. So take it away. Okay, can everybody see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. Well, good evening. Thank you for letting us present our fall updates to you. Um, I concur. I said to Megan this week, in some ways, it feels like we've been in school for five months. But um, when I was putting this together, I said, oh, it's only been five weeks. Um, but as you will see, we have lots to share with you and we're super excited. So I would like to take this um, opportunity to introduce to you to our elementary school leadership team. Lucia Copeland is one of our UPK teachers. Karen Hake one of our third grade teachers, Megan Penikoff, one of our instructional coaches, and Don McIntyre is one of our third grade teachers as well, and Matt G. John Batista, our assistant principal. So we've seen these many times before, but I think it's important to 
read them because they are the really the foundation in which the plan was created. So each student of our mission, each student will leave NRW family with pride and preparedness for their future path. The vision, NRW is a community com committed to fostering connections and developing experiences where individuals can engage in learning and cultivates individual indiv individualized potential. <clears throat> So this ne next few slides will give you an update on the progress of our school improvement plan and the exciting happenings that we've experienced thus far. So we have just completed our fall benchmarking of our kindergarten through fourth grade students using Ames Web. This chart gives you a visual representation of where we are with proficiency scores as compared to national norms. In each row, you will see cohort proficiency scores from last year in fall of 2020, which is the first column, compared to spring of 2021, which is that middle column. And then our most recent assessment in fall of 2021, which is the to the right column. The colors help you see how each cohort has progressed the next grade level. For example, the purple row under that first heading of reading will show you that this year's that last year's third graders were 48% proficiency in the fall of 2020 compared to 58% proficiency in the spring of 2021. And then you can see it shifts down because now they are fourth graders and they are currently at 60% proficiency for the fall of 2021. As students transition from one grade level to the next, we do at times anticipate some decrease since at the beginning of the next school year, there is a shift in expectation when moving to the next grade level and with the assessment expectation. We also felt that it was important to look at this data through a gap analysis model. So you'll notice to the right, you see that column that says gap eliminating progress. With all the challenges of last year, we wanted to see if gap eliminating progress was evident. When you compare fall to 2020, fall of 2020 to fall of 2021, may, many grade levels are closing academic gaps. For example, in reading, grade one had a 14% proficiency rate in the fall of 2020. But now as second graders, you can see how the red goes down in the second graders, they're now at 27% proficiency, which does show us some gap eliminating progress. In grade two, they were at 32% proficiency in reading in fall of 2020. And now in fall of 2021, they are at 41% proficiency as third graders. Similarly in math, grade three students were at 44% proficiency in the fall of 2020, and now are at a 48% proficiency rate at fourth graders in fall of 2021. This data allows us to focus more in depth on grade levels who did not show Gap eliminating progress from one year to the, the next. For example, our last year kindergartners in both ELNA and math, and last year's second graders in math. So that gives you a snapshot of where we are with our academics. Our first goal, focusing on partnership, aims to increase two way communication with students, families, and community members to create positive relationships. Since the school year began, we have implemented Parent Square. This app increases communication to families at the district, building, and classroom levels. To further build relationships with families, teachers are making two positive phone calls home each week. These calls highlight positive moments with students. Teachers are also sending home weekly newsletters communicating about curriculum, school events, and ways to connect school to home. Lastly, to work towards our goal of partnership, the elementary school hosted our open house, which had approximately 450 attendees. Students and their families were able to participate in a variety of outdoor activities, as well as interact with teachers and community partners. Our second goal is equity. So we will ensure that the students have choices and a voice in their learning and also to differentiate their learning and focus on individual student needs to close those learning gaps. So some of the action steps that we'll take to reach our goal of equity, 
is to continue to train the staff on using restorative practices. So restorative practices is an approach that helps build, strengthen, and value relationships. So everyone works together to build that school community, prevent conflicts, and they do this through meaningful dialogue and collaborative solutions. So it also creates an opportunity to repair harm and for people to acknowledge their wrongdoing. We also have our function-based thinking. So this is a model or a process for defining problem behaviors and selecting interventions that specifically match that behavior. So function-based thinking considers why the student is having the problem and what they need. So we have daily morning meetings for all classrooms. And here is where we build our classroom communities of respect for each other. So we couple the Cougar values and with our positivity project traits, such as bravery, integrity, kindness, the mindset that other people matter. And here students learn a common language and that they're able to feel safe and supported in their environment. This is also a good place for students to use that voice and to share their beliefs and celebrate in their diversity. This year, we have school-wide daily announcements. And in those announcements, we address our Cougar values and those social emotional learning traits. We provide examples that students can practice. And my students' favorite part is the weekly riddle. That's the fun part. And they get to solve the weekly riddle and get a prize. In the future, it will entail that the students are the ones who are leading the daily announcements. Our third goal is the social emotional goal. This goal places a focus on building and maintaining positive relationships and creating opportunities for celebration of students and staff. The Sweethearts and Heroes program was a district-wide initiative and was very well received by both students and staff. The circles discussions, which you can see pictured on the bottom left of the slide, were highly effective and resulted in students making themselves vulnerable and sharing in a safe space with other students and teachers. Placing an emphasis on the social emotional well being of students as we welcome them back full time in the fall was shown through the use of the fall field days, the first week of school. During these field days, students participated in many fun team building activities, and this made for a positive start to our school year. Team building activities have also been incorporated for staff to create peak moments of celebration. Some examples are the building scavenger hunt during our opening days and our tier one meeting bingo board, which will add fun and celebration to our regular team meetings. We're gonna, we continue to develop our PBIS system. Uh, we're developing a behavior matrix, as you can see in the middle there, which shows what it looks like uh, what behavior looks like in the classroom, uh, but we also have cafeteria, playground, um, all areas of the school. And so this matrix is based on our Cougar values to establish a common language and identify expectations for behavior. Uh, we have included uh, teacher voice already and we're currently developing and gathering student input uh, into this as well. Additionally, we have we're focusing on either a Cougar value or a positivity project trait each month to promote and reinforce the school and district values. The Cougar values are continuously reinforced with uh, the Pride Awards, which you can, which you can see on the right hand side, uh, where teachers nominate students who show Cougar value, and these are announced during our morning announcements. New this year to our building is the sensory room and sensory pathway. These sensory spaces help students develop motor skills, including balance, hand-eye coordination, and spatial awareness. Regulated movements have been found to optimize classroom attention, and these spaces allow for students to properly get sensory input so their brains can process information more effectively. Both the sensory room and the sensory pathway bring movement and academics together. Goal four focuses on academics. Our plan of action is to use multi-tiered systems of support and collaborative instructional models as a way to maximize student support while continuing to personalize learning. 
Our tier one facilitators at each grade level support a vertical professional learning community by reaching out to other grade level teams as well as their own. We're also very excited about our brand new team within Teams model this year. This is where classrooms actually have additional support for individualized daily reading, small group reading, and math from our reading teachers, our special education teachers, and our math interventionists. With the implementation of our tier one curriculum, creating consistent assessment cycles has been an important part of monitoring school student progress. We created and communicated when these data cycles will occur. This communication tool gives teachers an opportunity to plan and pace in a consistent manner, and then use similar data to set grade level goals, make instructional adjustments, and personalize learning during weekly tier one meetings. This also gives the MTSS team an opportunity to look at grade level data at planned times throughout the year to better assess if and when students may need additional support. The math intervention program Bridges is new this year as well. There is a placement test that puts our students who are at risk into the correct module to start them off for their intervention. Our interventionists started working with groups during our what I need or win time. We also have new this year are these intervention flow charts for reading. They're based on AIMS web data as well as specific intervention placement tests so we know that our kids are getting exactly what they need. Our last and final goal is finance and for us to develop effective ordering procedures. We've created a central supply room for extra supplies for teachers to use as needed. And you can see that on the left-hand side. Uh, so instead of reordering supplies that we already have, they can go and get them as needed. We also created a curriculum room where all teachers can access student workbooks, manuals, book bags, manipulatives, anything cur curriculum uh, related uh, can be found there. And lastly, we are ensuring that everyone in the main office is trained in the ordering procedures in order to create continuity in the, the process itself. We thank you very much for your support and we will accept any questions or comments. Uh, I have one, wherever we are. Okay, Jen. You hear? Okay, okay. I can hear uh, you, I can't see you. Uh, okay, well, anyhow. Okay. Will the report cards and comments from teachers be on Parent Square? Like the, the children's report cards, when they that get sent home? Yeah. Um, I don't think so. They still, we still print those through um, our regular school tool at this point. So they will be sent home in their backpacks, like typically. Okay. And can both parents access Parent Square? Yeah and additional family members as well. You just have to, it's a little icon that we add in school tools. So you just have to call the main office and we can add grandparents and other people too. But right now it's the main um, parents that the mother and the father that get added. And are there people who don't get it because of uh, internet shortages or? I don't think so. It goes, I mean, I guess the only thing I would say is the settings on Parent Square are, are your preference. So depending on how the parents have it set up for their preference settings, if they have email as their preference as their primary way of getting communication okay. and they don't have you know that access, maybe that could affect it. But there is a way that you can add multiple, you can add text, you can add email, you can add phone call. So there is a preferential piece from the parents' perspective as well. Great, good. Anyone else? Jason. I don't have a question. I just wanted to say I'm super excited because uh, I think I remember talking last year when we were discussing Parent Square, the ability to hone in on individual students and their needs. And now seeing in your presentation that uh, Ames Web is allowing you to do that. <clears throat> I'm super excited about what the future holds for, for students and their different learning types. It's cool to see, talk about it and now see it in real life. So keep up the good work and I'm, I'm glad we're on, on board with Ames Web. Thank I you. I think I said Parent Square instead of Ames Web, but 
I think you know what I meant. I do. Thanks. Thanks. Christy, I, I have one more. Um, the test scores look positive and it shows uh, getting back to school instead of half hybrid and, you know, whatever. Uh, I'm impressed with the Monday or the, excuse me, the morning meetings with children. Uh, does the whole school have the same um, goal when you have a monthly or a daily meeting or a weekly type thing? Yes, so the positivity project kind of drives that time. We use that resource and so we have, um, you can hone in on a grade level. So when you go to the positivity project website, it, everybody's doing um, courageous this month. And so every classroom, no matter what grade level, when you go in, you will see a positivity project um, <clears throat> lesson being taught, but at the different grade levels. So the, the, the program does that. There's videos, there's books, there's read alouds, there's a lot of interactive pieces. And then teachers do put their own spin on it. They may, because obviously it's very me meant to be very beneficial and very um, personal to your own class. So discussions may come up through those conversations and through those slides. Um, so I'm sure no two circles or morning meetings are exactly alike, but definitely from a foundational standpoint, we're all teaching the same traits at the same time. Well, I think that's going to have a major, a major impact on students relating to meetings and, and getting goal settings and understanding how things work and from a very young age on up. That's great. Thank you. And I have two questions. Yes. Uh, I, think, I guess this should be addressed to Christy. So I, when we look at, uh, I'm looking particularly at math, from spring to, to fall, there's a significant degradation or, or several at least degradations. I, but I've read that's, or, or I've been led to believe that's typical for all students across the world. Summer vacation, that part of their brain is lost on water skiing or something. Is that, is that correct? Absolutely. And I did, I tried to, it's hard to articulate that, but that, that is part of it. And then what we've noticed and what we know about Ames Web is from one year to the next, the assessments change. So what they're taking as a first grader, they may take different probes as a second grader. So there's a little shift there. Plus, um, Kindergarten and first graders, they take it one-on-one -on -one with a teacher where starting in second grade, they take it all by themselves on the computer. So then there's another learning curve there. Um, so there's lots of different reasons why we think we see that little dip. Um, but then I think it's important to, to compare that fall to fall because you can still see there is progress. Um, and we know with learning that it's more like a healthy stock market and not a straight line up. So I think as yes, we may see those dips as long as overall we're still seeing that upward trend, which the data shows across the across the whole building, we are seeing that upward trend in every grade level. Actually, I said I had two, but but now that led to another one. When's the next assessment? Um, so that will be in the month of January. Okay, great. Well, we're looking forward to that, of course. So my real second question was. Collaborative classroom, is that uh, grades one, two, three? I can't remember where, where that is in our, in, our, in our school. So it's actually kindergarten through sixth grade. Oh, wow. So, and then we, um, and then with the help of Sarah Patterson, our instructional coach, we actually even backed it back up a little bit in UPK, even though it wasn't part of the collaborative classroom program, we adapted part of the kindergarten curriculum. So even our UPKers are getting pieces of that as well. So we can actually say it's UPK through six. Okay, and that's in every classroom now, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Cinda? Yeah? I just wanted to make the comment that this was okay. certainly covers a comprehensive range of uh, how things are being organized, how things are being approached, and that it, I'm impressed with how it really is touching on all the different ways that students can learn and how their brains can be activated. It's, it's impressive. Yeah, it is. Nice to see progress in all those areas. Well, thank you very much, all of you elementary school people. 
great job and uh, a nice, nice update. Thank you. Have a good evening. We'll move, we'll move to the uh, Board of Education building liaisons. Um, Isetta, we've just heard an awful lot about the elementary school. Do you have anything you want to add? They, they've been very busy this month. And uh, I did uh, get an update from um, Mrs. Graves. And she was saying that they had a great turnout for the parent-teacher conferences. Um, the parents were able to do that either in person, um, do a Zoom or a telephone conference. So they had a lot of options that work for every family. Um, they had their first parent university um, grouping uh, this week, and that gave the students, the, the school and parents the ability to visit community uh, participation and learn more about the building itself and the interactivities. And Mr. Poole from the Wayne County Literary Volunteers came and he read stories to the students and their parents. And finally, she wanted to put a shout out to all the support and aides at the school for all that they do to make sure that the building runs successfully. And that's all of uh, Mrs. Graves' report. And that's quite a lot. Very good. <laughs> uh, John, do you have anything for the middle school? Uh, Mark was very kind in sharing with me a number of things. Uh, they're, set, they're pleased with settling into an instructional schedule. Um, the intervention schedule has started for that school. They're going to have a junior honor society induction and they hadn't had one last year because of COVID. So it'll be a two year induction. And the, the big thing of, for a middle school student is the Halloween dance where uh, um, peace and tranquility do not exist. Um, however, the kids remember that dance better than anything it happens the whole year sometimes. So I'm sure he's looking forward to it. That's, thank you. <laughs> All right. And Linda, the high school. Uh, Scott shared information with me too, because I wasn't able to uh, be at everything. But initially, uh, Missy Stolfi from the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention did do the community presentation on September 27th. And then following that, uh, she met with all the seniors in their English classes and presented more than sad is how they uh, uh, present information to students as to uh, what could be more serious uh, to pay attention to uh, with the welfare of classmates. And she's going to be returning in November to meet with juniors and then later in the year with ninth and 10th graders as well to cover that same information. But on a lighter note, uh, the high school did uh, experience and enjoy spirit week before homecoming and a pep rally before homecoming and the games. And then of course, the final exciting event was the fireworks display after the homecoming games on homecoming Friday. Uh, so I think all in all, a great start for the high schoolers. Glad to see each other, enjoying being together and creating a lot of school spirit and happiness there. Great. Great. Sounds like things are moving along well in the schools. Um, Linda, you're, do you wanna talk about the Fork County at all? Is there anything there? Yeah, actually, um, want to thank everyone if you did uh, take a look at uh, the propositions from last year and gave input for the New York State School Board Association for uh, what we feel would be important to be addressed again this year, what can be dropped and so on. Uh, so that's, that's what I wanted to do. But I also, uh, with an addition to the uh, agenda, I was able to attend yesterday the Wayne County Partnership 
meeting for uh, strengthening families. And I do have a handout that they gave us yesterday that really covers uh, what's been done over the last 10 years with the student surveys for sixth, eighth, 10th and 12th grade students. Uh, they did report at the meeting that overall in Wayne County, there has been a certain rise in, in positivity and feeling more connectedness with students and the school and their community, but we're far from where we want to be. So uh, it, this booklet that I'm, I'm going to pass on to Tina St. John to give you the copies will also include the partnership website and email. And because our school district participates, you would be able to go in on their website and take a look at the information that they've gathered from our students over time. So that might be of interest to you. Okay. That, that's it. Thank you. Um, the handbook committee, we've been meeting. Um, in fact, we have a meeting tomorrow morning. Uh, but we are working on updating the handbook and as soon as we've got it together, we'll be bringing it to the board members uh, to uh, peruse and change or approve uh, as, as uh, you feel need of the need. Um, so that's going on. Um, and I know the audit committee has met, Izetta. You're chair of that committee. You're, you're muted. Yes, we did meet. And uh, they had a, a, we had a very successful meeting and a lot of very good information. Uh, mostly that we are right on target and that um, like the school lunch fund last year, they were saying that we had too much that was held over. And so they kind of dinged us on that. And this year, because of the costs and things, we have more held over than we did last year, but our percentage is less. So we're right on target there. Um, they had a new um, category. And uh, if you looked at the, the report, it included a miscellaneous special revenue. And he said that is for scholarships. So if you question what that was, that's what it is. And at the, for the bottom line, he had nothing but positive things to tell us. And it said that we are in very good standing. So I would recommend that we definitely accept this report, <laughs> this audit. Okay, great. Great, thank you. Oh, um, and we also had no, uh, nothing that we had to have corrective action or anything for. Oh, oh wow, great. All right, um, that completes the report. Um, public access, Tina, has anyone asked to speak to the board tonight? No, I did not receive a request from anyone. All right, thank you. We'll move on. Uh, we come now to the consent agenda. Motion, please, to put the consent agenda or to approve the uh, consent agenda. Jason and Tina. The consent agenda goes all the way through the top of page six. Uh, are there any questions or? Uh, Everyone did receive the updated agenda that I sent, correct? Okay. We'll make sure that we have everyone has the right one. Yeah. Hearing no questions, all in favor of approving the consent agenda? Um, that is carried by uh, in everyone. And now on page six, we come to a good news time. Um, Anyone have good news? Jason. My good news is Parent Square. <clears throat> For anyone who is busy, 
they should be using Parent Square for everything because it's been a lifesaver for me uh, communicating with my daughter's uh, educators. So I'm just throwing out a little uh, advertisement for everyone out there listening. Download Parent Square, and uh, <clears throat> it's going to make life so much easier for you as far as communication, updates, upcoming assemblies, days off, early dismissals. All that stuff is on there, and uh, you don't have to hunt for it. So that's my good news for the night. That is good news. Anyone else? Bob? Three items. Uh, it's, it's almost impossible to keep up with all the sports that are going on, which is a wonderful thing. I'm glad I can't keep up with it because we have so many students involved in sports. But a couple of highlights was on homecoming. Uh, the boys soccer team trounced Gananda. Gren uh, so it was great to have a nice homecoming and have a win. Another thing about the boys soccer team, which was like the most incredible thing that's happened this fall with soccer, is we took on Williamson last weekend and they were uh, clearly the, the top of the league. And I forget their exact uh, scores, but I think it was like they were w winning 11 to two in, in the league and we beat them. So it was 11 to three after that night. And that was a wonderful win. And, and uh, the team, you know, the players were just ecstatic as were, as were all the stands. Uh, moving on, uh, the governor is, is trying to work with, uh, to help us all, not just North Rose Volca, but all of the districts across the state to, to, to solve the bus driver challenge. And I see Jeremy's uh, with us tonight, but uh, at, least at least it's publicly acknowledged and, it's, and we're, the state is trying to help. The last item was, and uh, as I had a touchdown, it was, I think you were, was, was literacy night. Literacy night was just a couple nights ago at the uh, Northwest Elementary School. What a fabulous program they put on. Um, there was opportunities to meet with just about any category that you wanted to. We had representatives from, from uh, uh, alternate, alternative energy, uh, collaborative classroom was, was involved. There were stations set up for all the, for the parents and the students to go to. It's really a nice job. Um, I, I will admit that I was a little disappointed we didn't see more parents, but that's something that we can all work on. But it was a great show at the North Rose Elementary School. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. yes. uh, having a granddaughter on the girls soccer team, and uh, she's a middle school student, but playing on the, on the varsity. Uh, just a very, very uh, positive atmosphere uh, during their recognition of seniors. Uh, they have four games this week, which is exceptional. They're trying to make up a couple of games. Uh, they had a great win at Red Creek, at Red Creek, which is always a, a positive. So I, I, thank you very much. Yes. Um, Paul, I think I heard you have some other good news. It's not about a current current student, but one of our parents, <coughs> and I think he's related to you. Would that be correct, Paul? Yeah, we, you know we all like to highlight things that our students have been able to accomplish, even after they've left North Rose Elementary. And uh, I've shared this with Mark and maybe a couple others, but uh, Mike Statsky, who's a graduate of our school, ended up being a Player of the Week for their. Uh, Collegiate uh, uh, Northeast Collegiate uh, Association, and he's, we're talking about baseball. So he's playing for Clarkson, and he just had a really good week at the at the plate. Batted 500, scored a couple of runs, knocked in a couple of runs. So I thought it was cool. And, yeah, thank you. I mean, I didn't want to brag about my son, but the fact is, he's a North Rose Elementary, or he's a North Rose Wolf at school graduate, and he was out there and uh, got. Uh, all of New England recognition for his uh, achievements. That's great. That's great. We all need a chance every once in a while to brag about our kids, don't we, everybody? Um, okay. Um, we have on our agenda um, board member requests. Um, and Tina Reed, are you there, Tina? Yeah, I don't know what happened to my video. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I hear you, but I don't see you. 
Nope. All of a sudden, the picture's gone. Well, you asked to speak to the board, so... Yes. All right. Please on October 30th, the Cougar Pride Parent Group is sponsoring what's called Trunk or Treat. And my proposal is that we be represented as a Board of Education at this event. What it involves is decorating your trunk of your car, your van, whatever, and then providing some kind of a Halloween treat to the kids. Last year, I was told they had about 400 students there. So I, I think it would just be nice for the board to be there. And what have you offered to do? Um, well, I've already gone because otherwise they were going to be gone. I purchased pencils and erasers that we would be able to hand out as opposed to candy. And you were going to decorate your trunk. Is yep. I will do it as long as everybody is in agreement. And anybody that wants to join me is more than welcome. Why did, what, what was wrong with candy? Just curious. <laughs> I, have a bag, I have a bag for you, Jason. <laughs> I have one for John too. Board, board members, uh, when, when some one board member is representing the board, we all need to agree and the right. person has has our authority to do so. Uh, thumbs up from you if you're in agreement with Tina's proposal. Oh, okay, I think Tina, you're good. I am too, but I don't know where I went. <laughs> I'll look at my schedule, Tina, and see if I can go with you, okay? Okay, it's, it's on the 30th from two in the afternoon, setup is two to three, or no, setup is at one to two, kids are there from two to about six. Awesome. You may want to bring your daughter, if nothing else. Yeah, I can well, help I you too, Tina. Right. If you've got, if you need it, uh, more than welcome. I, I, whoever shows up, shows up. It'd be great. Okay. I would, I would like to buy, be there as well. I'd actually uh, spoken to someone about that prior to it, but I wasn't thinking about representing the board. I was thinking about just helping. But yeah, I would like to do both. Okay. Great. Okay, we're good to go. Keep us um, posted, Tina, on what's okay. going on and where okay. we can meet you or how we can. Uh, it's at Marshall Park. Okay. So that's pretty easy. I'm not sure where we'll be set up yet. I haven't heard back, but I've already put in the request pending our approval tonight. So I'll get back in touch with her. Great, great. Okay. All right. Uh, are there any other board member requests, even though I didn't get you on the um, agenda? Okay. Um, at this time, we need to go back into another executive session. Uh, so I need a motion, please, to go into executive session to discuss the employment history of two specific employees. Motion, please. Linda, Paul. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Motion is carried. Um, Tina, we'll be moving into executive session. Uh, to those of you who are visiting us with us tonight, we will not be doing any further business this evening. We will, we, when executive session is over, we will come back into open session and adjourn. Come in. All right, there's no one waiting to come in. All right, um, then I will entertain a motion to adjourn, please. Tina and John, um, any discussion? All in favor? Great, then we are all adjourned. Thank you for tonight and have a good evening. Thank good you. Good night, all. Take care.